Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woken. I'm here to accept these missions, and I'm also back with some more Fate Grand Order. Today's video, I plan to play this new Lost Bell. As is usually tradition for me, I like to do the opening read for it, so that's what today's video is going to be. Uh, spoilers if you're not caught up, and remember to leave a like if you end up liking this, because it's a lot of reading, and it really hurts my throat when I'm done. I repeat, I am a mage from proper human history. Please come and find me with the following coordinates. This is Belander's The Wandering Sea. Wandering Sea? Wandering Sea? The Wandering Sea? That's one of the three great organizations of the Magecraft world. There's the Clock Tower in London, the Atlas Institute in Egypt, and the oldest of them all, the Wandering Sea. It was located on an island from the Age of Gods, hidden in the Northern Oceans. Does this mean it still exists? <gasps> Gasp. That was what happened on the last episode. Last part. <laughs> Atmospheric analysis complete. Nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and carbon dioxide levels all green. The mana in the atmosphere is almost identical to levels in the 21st century. I'm not picking up any harmful trace of substances either. Hmm. So we still have breathable air, even in this creepy bleached world. Well, that means we can park the shadow border and go have a look for ourselves. What do you think, Wilkie? Doesn't that sound intriguing? Stepping out into a world of sheer nothing in every direction? <laughs> of course it does. First, we'll go out and get some fresh air, then we'll look for food. Uh, you still haven't told me about the Wandering Sea, actually. Cryptic silence. Empty smile. You don't know either, do you? Oh, of course I do, you dolt. Gordoff music is not a man to pretend to know something he doesn't. The Mages Association isn't a monolith, I'll have you know. Just because I used to work at the clock tower doesn't mean I, I've, ever, I've, I've ever been to supposedly living wandering sea in the North Sea. Oh, so you've only heard rumors. I thought you were some big important family, old man. Don't you call me that double chin. If I spell it out for you, there it is. Here it is. The Wandering Sea of Belanders is the first enigma ever discovered in the world of Magecraft. It will be the last to be puzzled out. It's an island so mysterious and full of mystics that even such a gifted mage of an incredible bloodline as myself may not even set foot on it. It's true. That all fits with what's in Caldea's database. It says that, though the Mages Association has been around since the start of the AD era, it's also split into three branches shortly after its inception. The Mages who settled in London evolved with the times and focused on developing Magecraft over the course of history. That faction went on to become the Clock Tower, the largest and most powerful Magecraft organization in the world. Its members included the Atmospheris family, I cannot pronounce them, the founders of Caldea, and Mr. Gorodoff here. Quite so. Here in the 21st century, the Mages Association and the Clock Tower are all but synonymous. The next major faction in the Atlas Institute in Egypt, they're dedicated to perfecting alchemy. We actually infiltrated their headquarters once during the Sixth Singularity. It was a huge research complex, almost like a giant crypt built on, uh, deep underground. And easy as it was to get in, it was hard to get out. The Atlas Institute's ironclad rule is that technology created there must never leave. But Caldea's first director was granted an exception thanks to the Atlas contract. The technology he was able to take from the Atlas Institute enabled him to complete Caldea. Caldeus. It was also the Atlas Institute that presented him with the Void Reality Observation Device, Paper Moon, one of the finest mystic codes ever made. Indeed, they seldom poke their noses out of their little hole in the ground, but I'm told they do converse with lords, albeit as little uh, as burp, and that's just how Gordoff talks, as be it as little as possible. They may be a heartless bunch who only care about weapons and technology, but they can be rather useful if you play your cards right. And finally, the last faction is the Wandering Sea, the Ballanders, said to be somewhere in the North Sea. However, the most I could find about them was a brief overview even in Caldea's extensive files. It is said that their cardinal rule is the only recognized magecraft from the, age, magecraft from the age of gods and refuse to accept any advancements or alterations you urge by civilization. In essence, their ideology is the exact opposite of the clock towers. Indeed, refusing to accept progress in magecraft means refusing to accept consumer civilization. 
The Wandering Sea's philosophy of magecraft is fundamentally incompatible with modern human society. That is why they keep their gates firmly shut and why they seldom add to their number. Hmm. In other words, they're a bunch of old footy duddies obsessed with magecraft so ancient it has even been measured in carbon dating. That said, they do open their gates just once every year to try and recruit promising new talent. But even among mages of the clock tower, the number who actually make it to the Wandering Sea can be counted on one hand. Do you have? Do you see my point? I'm saying the Wandering Sea is every bit as secretive as the Atlas Institute, just in a different way. No one from the outside has ever been able to get the full story, the reason being... As the name suggests, the Wandering Sea is always on the move. Most who know of it believe it to be a floating island somewhere in the North Sea, but it is in fact the very opposite. Wait, one moment, is there no sound coming? Oh, apparently there's just no music for this part. Alright. Uh, the Wandering Sea's headquarters were built before the AD era began, and they never move at all. It is instead the sea in which they are located that moves around, a world unto itself in many ways. It is almost certainly why its location remains a secret even in the 21st century. Land that moves around while placing mystic textures on itself, I see. That would make it its own independent singularity. It would also explain how it was able to escape whatever turned the Earth's surface into an endless white desert. Hmm. <laughs> All this time they've been turning their noses up at us, and the moment things go south, they don't have any issue sending us distress signals. Same successor to true mystics they turned out to be. They should be taking a page from our book. We're the ones who made it through Russia by the skin of our teeth. With no outsider help, we're the ones who are currently flailing about with no plan. Uh, at least you understand the situation. It's a little bit dire, I guess. Given the present circumstances, it looks like the people of the Wandering Sea have decided to bend their rules in order to offer us a lifeboat. At any rate, <laughs> Administration Advisor Holmes, I have a question for you. I would like to be as certain as possible. What do you make of this? Can we trust their distress signal is genuine? I'm afraid I can't speak to that. What do you think, Da Vinci? Could go either way, from the look of it. This transmission isn't part of the clock tower standards, but its wavelength is pretty close to the waveforms from the Atlas Institute it uses. Since we don't have any data about the Wandering Sea ourselves, I can't really give you a definitive answer. Still, I can verify that there's definitely something to be found at these coordinates. Whatever the story is, there's a Magecraft workshop there, but I'd like to see you at least check it out. I know we managed to stretch things out with materials we got in Russia, but there are still limits to what the Shadow Borders can do. What I really want to do is return to the whole frame from scratch, but I doubt we'll find we'll be finding much way in materials considering the entire world seems to be an empty wasteland. Hmm. Huh. These coordinates from the Wandering Sea would put it as is, the seas west of Norway. We could go through the Scandinavian peninsula and turn north at Germany and cut through Denmark. We just left Moscow heading west, so it will take a few days to reach them regardless of our route. Or route. Assuming that the border can convert the mana to atmosphere into electricity, that just leaves the question of food. What if we go to the Wandering Sea via Zero Sail? Can't we just pop over there? Uh-uh. No Zero Sails as a technical advisor, I expressly forbid it. Even if we were going to run into another one of those storm walls along the way, we need to stick to the surface as much as possible. But why? And did you just say that there are more of these storm walls? Explain yourself, technical advisor. If there's another storm wall in our path, other than me running straight into another lost bell? We don't have any other choice, Gordolf. Keep on to say Gandalf. Not with the two big problems we're facing. First, there's a small matter of the wandering seed living up to its name. These coordinates they sent us are all over the place. Literally, in fact, they're in constant state of flux. Nothing definite in our pri price size. With coordinates like these, it would take very risky to see us try to zero sailing there with Paper Moon. So until and unless we go to the Wandering Sea directly and forge some kind of connection to it, the long distance zero sails out of the question. Second, and this is the real problem, we don't have the energy. Yes, Holmes oh so helpfully suggested converting mana into electricity as if it were a simple matter, but that can only get us so far. The conversion rate isn't efficient enough, so we'd end up spending more power than we can produce, which would make a long zero sail trip fatal. After all, no more power means no more working life support systems. I don't know about you guys, but I sure don't want to be out of the bleached white world all by myself. Uh, good point. The logic walls we have to put up in void space do use a lot of power. 
at our current energy levels. I don't think the border could last two hours there. And like Da Vinci said, we don't have the exact coordinates we need. <sighs> so what? Are you saying we need another Lost Belt if we're going to reach this possible hope for salvation? Where is this new Lost Belt anyway? If we use a typical world map, then the entire Scandinavian Peninsula is covered by one of these storm walls. Another half a day or so of driving, and it should all go the closest to the edge of the world for ourselves. And I take that to mean that this white, featureless ground will continue until we exit Russia territory then? At any rate, we only have two possible routes to the Wandering Sea's destination coordinates. One that takes us across the Scandinavian Peninsula, and one that brings us to the sea via Poland and Germany. Da Vinci, in your estimation, which of these gives us our best chance? Should we go by land or by sea? I think maybe a, making a sea voyage would be a lot of asking the border. We could perhaps go through straight to the Dover, but to be honest, I'd rather we keep our distance from British Isles, since we have no idea about the state of the ocean just now. So what I'm saying is, I think the overland route is the best choice right now. Good grief. No sooner we're done with one lost belt, we're off to a second. Your thoughts, Miss Wilkie? Uh, are there any other regions we could cross? An excellent question. I want to know what's going on in the rest of the world, too. What about Europe, in, uh, for instance? The Scandinavian Peninsula is the only place with a storm wall. Not seeing anything on the Greek side whatsoever. Also, I didn't mention this before because I didn't want to upset you, but I'm not seeing anything from England at all. We need more power observation equipment than what the Shadow Borders gets to see what's happening with the British Isle. What? Gur, so you're, Gur, <laughs> so you're, the, you're set on us having, Gur, so you're set on us having us, what? Gur, so you're set on having us cross the Scandinavian Peninsula, then aren't you? I almost went pretty good without and a big old sentence re, 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 remix. All right, we've come this far after leaving Moscow, so at the border's current speed, we should reach the peninsula in about two days. Very well then. Use that time to make sure we're fully prepared. Manyo! If we run into anything, we could use a shore up our defense along the way, take the opportunity to stop the border, and ensure everything is in good working order. Da Vinci, you look after the little demi servant girl. I can't have her falling down on the job. Holmes, come with me. We're going to the solitary confinement chamber. Solitary confinement? Mr. Gorf, does that mean. Of course. I'm going there to interrogate Cadoc. He should be waking up any time now. It's time for me to put my brilliant questioning skills to use. When I'm through with him, he'll have to t he will have told us what the cryptors are, what Woodman is playing, planning, everything. Mark my words. I'm coming too. I'm coming. Hmm. Don't you look at me like that. You need the right people for the right job, I admit. I may not be the best fit for interrogation, but you, even less so. Don't you worry, Kadok may be something of a twisted little brat. Be still a growing boy, merely tempt him with food and he'll be putty in my hands. Trust me, one whiff of a creamy carbonara will turn his complexion from sour milk into sunflowers in an instant. Worry not, Miss Wilkie, I'll see to it that the interrogation doesn't devolve into violence. In fact, I have my own questions I wish to ask him. I have a fairly good idea of the cryptor's goal now and I also believe I know the extent of Kadok's and Zimbalist's personal knowledge. However, there are still two important things I know little about, the Tree of Emptiness and the Cirrus Light Command spell of his. Granted, the latter is something Kadok merely mentioned once and may not be that important. <laughs> An emergency alert! What's this all about? I thought we were supposed to be any more opportunistic. We're not out of Russian woods yet. Something's approaching at high speed. It's closing in on our port side. It's over at over 90 kilometers per hour. Come on, Manua. Floor it before he catches up to us. I can't. <laughs> what the heck was that, boys? I can't. Uh, I can't. We're just about to go uphill. The border can't go any faster. Ah, oh, crap. I'm picking up a heat signature, too. It's an RPG. Impact in three, two. I felt that. Please tell me that wasn't a direct hit, Da Vinci. <laughs> Damage report is the engine attack. Are we going to bail in the middle of this race? I'm sure the damage is negligible. And our armor is still perfectly intact. We didn't need to do more than wipe off the scorch mark. The Shadow Borders armor is a composite of cutting-edge technology and Magecraft theory. 
Normal weapons can't even scratch it. That's not what I'm seeing, Holmes. The blast took out one of our armor blades. Another hit like that and we'll be in deep shit. Huh? Really? Some great- Holmes! <laughs> I mean, I remember now. This is the same sort of that fell way back. Oh, shit. Uh, two weeks ago, when I was just a hapless, albeit handsome man, being shot at with an anti-material rifle. This could only mean that Kayanaska is back to finish the job. It might be the curtains this time. Fall, fall! Uh, spare us a trip down memory lane, old man. Come on, Holmes, do something. Oh, right, my apologies. I'm still not used to eating crow. <laughs> Evacuate all staff to the portside hallway to the engine room immediately. Miss Kyrolite, I'll go and deal with this attack. On that note, Miss Kyrolite, I would like you to put up a magical energy barrier to the material hallway so as to fend off possible second round. I trust you're alright with that, Wookie. I am. Go for it, Mesh. Don't worry, Senpai. I won't let them put one more scratch in the border. Run, run, run. Uh, the hostile entity would reach the shadow border in 50 meters. Putting us up visual now. Girl, I think they're hot stuff. Their vehicle must have impressive suspension if they're heading straight towards us, though. I didn't think Russia had any race cars like that around. Alright, where are you going, you little leftover opernikik? Let's see what you look like. Oh, what the actual hell? That's not a vehicle, it's a person. Someone is approaching on foot. Wait, that silhouette. What? <laughs> Clergy vestment in the lost belt savory, it's the priest? The one who called himself a Metropolitan Macarius? Is he just on foot chasing us? I woke up when I thought I heard a voice calling me. It was a cold, almost brittle kind of voice. Where am I? Guess this means I'm still alive. Ugh. There's a dull ache in the back of my head where I got pistol whipped. He sure wasn't playing around. Goddamn cowboy, shouldn't outlaws be cool and laid back and all that? This shaking. Am I in a vehicle? There must be a shadow border. This must be the shadow border. I try to assess the circumstances the best I can in this dimly lit place. Looks like they took me prisoner. They'd bound my hands, but now I can move around freely. The anti-magecraft cuss they must have used on me are lying piece on the floor. Did I break them unconsciously while I was out? No, I couldn't have. I know I'm not capable of that. Why are these cuffs so damn cold? Did something freeze them off and turn them brittle? Or maybe it's her farewell gift to me. Ugh. That thought even entered my head makes me sick. I don't have time to get all sentimental now that I failed. I don't have the right. Of course, that doesn't mean I'm going to waste this opportunity. I'm going to make a getaway. Is someone attacking the shadow border from the outside? But the only ones who could do that are the cryptors. Does that mean someone's here to rescue me? No, there's no chance of that. They're here to shut me up. There's one reason no one would waste their time on a loser like me. Alright, I can't just sit around and wait for them to kill me. First off, I'm going to find a way out of here after that. Who knows? Escaping's all I can hope for now. Once that's done, I'll just get to see what the wind takes me. I guess I'll go see where the wind takes me. There you go. Damn it, there goes another one. What's the situation? Uh, Mash Ranger showed just in time. There's one barely did anything. Way to go, Mash. Fall, fall. Uh, hostile enemy sermon is still pursued on the border's report side. Oh, wait, is he about to fire again? How many rounds did he bring with him? Mm, I just noticed the NFF services marking on that thing. This must be one of Kayanaska's weapons. No wonder it was able to damage the Magecraft armor. That said, heh, looks like that priest is all sermon and no rod. Like pearls before swine, so too gold before music, I suppose. The only ones that could properly handle a modern magecraft weapon like Kashina's head or cell. Wait, what? The hatch is open? Why is the hatch open? Gord off quick, check the internal and surveillance cameras. I think someone's opened the border's hatch and got inside. Got outside? There's someone, there's someone on the starboard ramp. What? That can't be right. You expect me to leave someone's hanging from the side like this is some kind of action move? Wait, that's Kodok Simplus. Just how many adventure craze nuts are there around here? I thought there was something on us. The signal's heading towards the deck now. Grr, so he's trying to take advantage of the confusion to escape. Eh? Come on, Wookie. 
worth taking the hatch and going up there too. Do not let Kata get away. I have a mountain of questions I still need to ask him. Right. Let's do it. Let's do it to it, bro. You, huh? Figures you'd show up. You're looking a little less dazed now. Glad to see you're back to your usually happy-go-lucky nonsense. Uh, looks like you're backing up and at him, too. Yeah, I guess we've both been pushing ourselves to the limit. Takes its toll, though, doesn't it? Always felt the pressure before, but it's even worse now that it's gone. Hell, I might as well have had better. Well, I might as well have had a bag of feathers on my shoulders earlier compared to now. We both know what we wanted to do, but we really didn't get it. Enough chit chat already, Zempelus. Get back inside the border now. We'll make sure you're treated fairly under inter international law. Trust me, you don't want to be stupid and go jumping off a moving vehicle like this. I can tell you from experience that you'll regret it. You'll end up dead, and you'll have lost. You. We'll have lost you. Show me what you're willing to help us and be willing to put in a good word for you with the association. Huh. You don't have to threaten me. I thought there might be a light board or something out here, but there's nothing. Getting out here was a huge pain in the ass, and it looks like it was all for nothing. Once I might have jumped off just to spite you, but now... Now I've got a promise to keep. I can't go throwing my life away. You want to interrogate me, right? Fine, I'll tell you everything you want to know. That's a small price to pay for survival. At this point, I don't care what it takes to stay out a lot. Excellent, that makes my little insurance trip out here well worth it. Duh. Turn around, you idiot. Kadak. He's about to get chest punched. Rasputin, you son of a... Why, if it isn't Gordoff music, how nice to see you again. You too, Master of Chaldea, allow me to offer my congratulations on successfully taking down Russia. Let go of him right now. I'm afraid I can't do that. I have my own concerns, you understand, of course. My job was to oversee Kadek Zemplis' role as a cryptor, and that role has come to an end. So I thought I would give him as a merciful send-off as possible. <gasps> Grr, as if Da Vinci wasn't enough, now he's gone and stabbed Kadek in the back too. As a gentleman, I'm honor bound to stop him, but my goof punch will never work on him. Oh shit. Damn it, where's Holmes when you need him? I thought he was always supposed to be two steps ahead. Not to worry, Director Gordoff, and limiting all of you is in my in my job district description. Russia is currently my sole jurisdiction, you see. As such, I need to handle this before you left the area entirely. I hope you can forgive the necessity of my resorting to such drastic measures unbefitting of my age, though they are. I'm afraid I lack Kayanaska's ability to move between Lost Belts. I'm limited to getting around the same way you do. As a middle manager of sorts, I'm not able to go to the next Lost Belt without the Foreign God's permission. Foreign God? Intriguing. Would you be so good as to tell us more, Metropolitan Macarius? I'm sorry I'm late, Master. Huh? Kodak? Now then, it'd best be on my way. I hope you don't mind me. Am I saving the answer to your question for our next meeting, Sherlock? Oh, but before I go, I would at least like to put a stop to this false name you've been using for me. My true name is Rasputin. Grigory Rasputin. That said, I confess that the spirit origin doesn't belong to me. I'm simply borrowing it from a dead man. I did deduce all that a long time ago, my dear priest. My concerns are more fundamental in nature. Major. Where did you acquire the dead man? In proper human history, Kotamine Kire's body was cremated. So how did you come to take possession of a dead man without a body? Oh, I'm sure you'll figure that out sooner or later, Sherlock. That is, after all, what you do. You once called the incineration of humanity a mythological murder case. In which case, go ahead and label this attack as the same way. Ask yourself, who committed this crime and how? Once you have arrived at the answer, we'll meet again. When that day comes, I look forward to you accusing the culprit in person. Father Kodamini, I mean, Rasputin has made off of Kodak. What should we do, Senpai? Maybe we turn the border around now. Don't bother, we'll never catch up and we can't risk going back to Russia. We'll just have to give up on interrogating Kodak, Zemplis. This was my fault, I should have considered that someone might pursue us. 
may pursue us, but whatever, same thing. May oh my oh. Gah. Damn it, I can't believe I got knocked out again. Sneaking up on people, stabbing them is kind of your thing, huh? I think my heart actually stopped for a while back there. Indeed it did. If it hadn't, do you really think Holmes would have let you escape so easily? No, if he had realized that you were still alive, they would have come back to retrieve you. I couldn't let that happen. Not after Kirishka asked me to bring you back to Olympus. Is that so? Well, it doesn't matter either way you wasted your time, Rasputin. Oh? Whether Caldea kills me or Woodmane does it, I'll just I'll be just as dead. Now that I feel I don't belong with either of them, I'm just gonna I'm just going to be, be an example to other cryptors. What? What is it? You've got something to say? Then spit it out, father. Apologies, I was just thinking about how much easier my job would be if Karishja was that sort of person. <coughs> At any rate, it's clear what's going to happen to you. You may have lost your right to, be, to run a lost belt, but you still have Sirius' as light. <coughs> That command spell belongs to our god. As long as you possess it, your life does not belong to you alone. You no longer have the option of throwing your life away, Cut Exemplus. Zenlupus? Your fate is to have every last bit of your soul squeezed out of you until the day you die. Alright. That was the intro. I'm not about to do that again because it's already almost 30 minutes long and someone's about to come home. So that's it for today, everyone. Have fun playing the story and I'll see you guys in the next one. The mic is on my tummy. Goodbye.